This is Scotty Silver for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm pleased to be joined by legendary trainer, Mr. Dominic Ingle. Dom, how are you doing, mate? I don't know, I think you've always stretched your day a legendary. I mean, you need another 20 or 30 years for that status, I think. Well, I don't know. I mean, and, and not only that, I mean, you're looking really buff as well. You're looking like you, you could be a boxer yourself. So well, I'm... that's that's the thing. When you're getting fighters into shape, you know, you need to keep yourself in shape. And uh, you know, that's what I do. It keeps you fit, keeps you on track and on point. So it's, it's all good. Yeah. Back over here in Fuerteventura. It's been a, been a little while since we've caught up. Of course, lots and lots have happened uh, in the world of boxing over the, over the last few weeks. But we want to go back from when I saw you last time. Of course, uh, a Calbrook, Errol Spence. Mm. Uh, I'd seen you in training. Everything went absolutely perfect for, from my point of view. Do you look back now and think, could have done this different or that no, different? No, no, you know, everything went perfect. Kill trained hard, you know, uh, making ten and a half stone. Mm. Fuck enough on middleweight, you know, he put the work in, he, you know, he put his heart and soul into that training camp. He looked in fantastic shape. Um, and unfortunately, on the night, you know, for me, he was winning the fight up until about round six. You know, got the injury and it all turned around from there. So it was very disappointing. You know, Kel's upset about it. But you have to go back to the drawing board, you know, pick up the pieces and, uh, you know, start again. Yeah. I mean, Kel's over here at the moment, just getting back into the training. I mean, what happens next with Kel? Is there anything sort of planned as of yet or is it just get fit and see how it goes from there? You know, I've obviously keep in touch with Eddie and the promoter. Uh, he's looking at a December date for Kel. But that all depends on, you know, Kel getting himself back into shape and, we needed a start point. Um, you know, we need to start. He needs to start training now. He's come out. Uh, you know, for the last couple of weeks of Billy Joe Saunders' training camp. It's a great crack. You know, they get on like I was on fire. And I think it's motivated Kel as well because there's somebody going through something that he has to go through. You know, Billy is renowned for not being in shape and you know uh, turning up to fights at 50%. Um, I suppose for Kelly it's nice to realise that somebody else has, has to go through that apart from him and it's it's always nice watching somebody else do it instead of yourself so I think it's motivated Kel um, and he's picking his feet up and he's, he's starting into it slowly so we'll have a good four or five weeks breaking into the training you know pick it up and hopefully you know he needs to get back in the ring in December hopefully he's going to put him in a fight um, you know get him back on his feet and then look for that big fight in the in the spring but you reckon it probably will be light middleweight this is what's been on you know, everyone's he might, he might come back you know might have his he, he, you know not a warm up fight but his fight back you know around about 11 stone maybe 11 1 or maybe just under mm. it depends what the opponent is and it depends how his training is going if he can motivate himself enough to make 10 and a half stone then he'll do 10 and a half stone you know Kilbrook does Whatever, whatever's asked of him so we'll see how he goes yeah and I've got to say as well great to see uh, someone from Eddie Hearn's stable and someone from Frank Warren's stable both training together and getting on wouldn't it be good if the whole world of boxing politics yeah, could be like fight, that fighters are fighters you know regardless of the promoter or the trainers you know fighters understand each other it's a community when all said and done you know we have fighters you know uh, cross promoters fight, uh, supporting each other you don't you know you don't you know, put up a wall because it's with another promoter. You know, the, you know, guys get on. We have sparring partners coming out from different, you know, from different training camps, from different promoters. Everybody gets on. We've got John Ryder coming out um, at the end of the week. He's with Eddie Earn. He's doing a favour and doing a bit of sparring with Billy Joe. Um, so you know, it all works out. Yeah, and Billy Joe, he's got his big fight September the sixteenth. Everyone's been saying what what great shape he's in, and and how has it been going? Obviously, you're training Billy Joe for for this fight. All good. Yeah, he, you know, listen, he, he's a good kid. Um, you know, we've got the blueprint training fighters like Billy Joe Saunders with Kel Brook. I mean, we went with Kel Brook for years, so when, when Billy walks into camp, you know, overweight and unconditioned, I, ca I can imagine some people like, you know, want to turn around and walk out the door, but it's a challenge for us. And as long as he's prepared to put in the work, he said to me, you know, what's the trick? You know, how does Kel get into fantastic shape? You know, he told me a story. I said, why, why did you want to come and train with us? And he said, well, I saw Kel. You know, um, at the first press conference with Spence, and I thought there's no way he's going to make ten and a half stone. And when he stepped on the scales, 13 or 14 weeks later for the fight, he goes, "I was scratching my head, thinking, how's he done that?" And I just said to Billy, "Look, you know, it's just hard work, dedication, motivation, focus. You're world champions. You've got to do it. It's not a, a game you can play at 50 percent." Because then I made my mind up. Then I wanted to come and you know train in Sheffield. I used to train there as an Olympian. And uh, he came up and everybody got on with him straight away. We all bond bonded. You know, he stuck to the programme. He's got the nutritionist, Greg Marriott, helping with his diet. Who's whips Flanagan, in, Terry Flanagan into shape, Kel mm. Brook into shape. He's actually doing the, the nutrition for Luke Campbell, who's facing Lenora. So, mm. you know, 
Billy switched on, he stuck to the program, as you can see is, you know, we're less than three weeks away from the fight and he looks better now than when he steps on the scales, you know, for his fights, for weighing. So, you know, he's put the graft in fair play to him. He says he's going to make uh, Monroe quit. Just yeah, you know, see that. let's not get carried away with it, you know, and that might be in his head, but, you know, the only, the only bad fight I've seen Monroe is against Golovkin and Golovkin mm. makes everybody look bad. He doesn't give you the time to do anything, he's got you on the back foot all the time. And, you know, he put Monroe under pressure, Monroe hit him with everything and, and Glocking just smiled at him and carried on and I think it disheartened him. But, you know, at this moment in time, Billy Joe Saunders is not Golovkin. You know, let's not go, get confused with that, but he's a different type of fighter. But, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard made Duran quit. You know, he didn't fight Duran's fight, he fought his fight the second time round and yeah. tormented the life. No mess. Out of Duran and Duran, you know, wants to stand and have a fight. You know, Billy Joe, Joe Saunders is a good fighter. He's a, he's a technical fighter. He's a skillful fighter. He can fight, you know, going forwards, backwards. He's defensive. You know, he's like one of our fighters. When Frank Warren phoned me up weeks and weeks ago, I looked at me before and I thought, I've missed call from Frank. What, what's this about? And he said, I've got a fighter for you to train. And when he told me it was Billy Joe Saunders, I was like, you know, that's one fighter I'd love to train because, you know, there's only a few things that need tweaking with him. His diet, his conditioning. You know, he can fight. That's not that's not the issue. You know, a little things need tightening. A few things need tightening up. But you know, what a dream dream guy to train. You know, to train. But most people would look at him and think, nightmare, not condition, eats rubbish. You know, probably don't do as he's told. But you know, that's far from the point. You know, he comes in. What am I doing? You tell him. He does it. Anything else? No. Right. Done. That's it. He, he sticks to the plan. It's easy. Mm. Yeah. I, well, I say I've never seen him in this kind of shape before. Uh, before we say goodbyes, I think everybody had an opinion about last week's fight. Uh, Mayweather, Conor McGregor, suddenly everyone was a boxing expert. It's going to be the same over the next week or two regarding uh, Triple G and Canelo. But you are an expert, so I've got to ask you, what's your opinion? Who well, wins that fight? Well, firstly, personally, I actually thought Conor McGregor did really well. I don't think it did the world of boxing any, any harm. It created a, lot, created a lot of hype. It wasn't, you know... The David Hay, Audley Harrison fiasco. You know, I thought Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor did all right. You know, he, he flicked the jab out, he threw some shots, he put some moves in there. All right, Mayweather wasn't the fighter. You know that he that he, he was. He's two years down the line. He's a little bit older, but he still knew enough. He still had the experience to to beat the younger man. So you know, fair play to Conor McGregor. You know, I think I think he put in a good performance. Canelo, Golovkin. You know, you could see. In Golovkin's fight against Kel, Kel knocked the stuffing out of him a little bit. I remember before the Kel book fight, they were talking about beating Kel easy enough, fighting in November of that same year. They didn't. I said afterwards, there's no way he's going to fight straight after that fight. Too, too, too much out of him. He boxed Jacobs. I thought Jacobs did remarkably really well, boxed really well. And I'm just thinking maybe, you know, Canelo being a bit younger, maybe the time is right, you know, if, if, if uh, Canelo gets the tactics right. I'm still going to go with Golovkin, edging it, maybe split decision or very close, close fight. Um, I think he's still got a little bit left in the tank. I don't think he's ready yet. But if there's a time, you know, if there's a time that he can be taken, if Canelo's got it right and done everything 100% right and he got the tactics right, there could be an upset. But I'm still going to go with Golovkin. I've got to say, I've interviewed a lot of people regarding this fight and bearing in mind the knockout ratio that both these guys have got, nearly everyone I've spoke to have said they reckon it's going to, going to go to points. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. When you get two guys, you know, with that kind of punching power, they've also got good punch resistance mm. as well, that's the thing, you know, they've never been stopped, you know, Glocking maybe have been wobbled once or twice, maybe, maybe Canelo has, but they've, they've got rock solid chins. And there are some cases when, you know, there are big punches out there, but they can't hold a shot. But these two guys can hold a shot. So when you've got the punching power and you've got the good chin, I can't see, it, you know, it going, it going short. I can't see it going short. So all you guys out there, if you fancy a flatter, you know where you've heard it from. Dominic Ingalls, it's been an absolute pleasure joining me today for Eiffel TV. And wish you well and happy training camp. Thanks a lot, Scott. Tech.